Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we to look at what's really going on in the world of Bricks. Now today I want to talk about the EU and Russian gas. Now I know most of you be aware of the rhetoric of Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the EU, proudly proclaiming that as she was the Empress of Europe, she was going to destroy Russia and make sure its economy was in tatters. The ruble was going to be rubble and the countries of the EU were going to unleash the sanctions from hell on Russia. Plus the EU would no longer buy any hydrocarbons from Russia. Well, two and a half years later, it appears that despite the ravings of the mad old Haradin, things have not quite worked out according to her plan or her mad ravings. Now, according to Dmitry Berchevsky, who's the Director of Economic Cooperation at the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, EU countries are increasing their imports of Russian natural gas. He stated that the growth trend reported by the European Statistical Services is contrary to everything that Ms. van der Leon adopted in the spring of 2022, saying they would stop buying from Russia. So why does Europe continue to purchase Russian gas despite the populist statements and how will the seasonal demand change? Well, the volume of gas supplied by Russia to the EU in the first half of 2024 has exceeded the figures achieved in the first half of 2023. Consequently, the supply of liquefied natural gas to France has increased to over 100% from 2 billion to 4.4 billion cubic metres. Now, it's thought that those supplies are used for other things, for the resale to other European countries who don't have the gasification uh, facilities. Now, it's worth noting that a number of European countries opted not to pay Gazprom in rubles back in 2022, which were Bulgaria, Poland, the Netherlands, Germany and others. And they decided not to do it. And obviously, the Nord Stream and Yamal Europe pipelines are essentially not operational. And... The, the volumes of gas transported by the Ukraine pipeline system have declined. As you're aware, they blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, so they've now ceased to exist. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Everybody who uh, does contribute and donates uh, does get a personal thank you. And by the way, thank you all just for watching. Now, in 2021, Russian hydrocarbons accounted 40% of EU's imported energy resources. And that figure, according to Barchevsky, has dropped to around 15%. However, Moscow has repeatedly highlighted that the refusal to buy the cheap and expensive hydrocarbons uh, by a well-established infrastructure like pipelines is a significant financial mistake. As a result, European countries are now buying Russian gas from intermediaries or paying elevated price for LNG from the US or the Middle East. I mean, this is due to the artificial limitation of supply, while the demand remains high. I mean, according to the Centre for Economic Expertise at the National Re Research University, uh, there's been a notable increase in gas imports to the EU compared to 2023. In the first eight months of 2024, Russian gas supplies to the European Union reached 21.5 billion cubic metres. Now, in the same period last year, it was 16.7 billion cubic metres. So the year-on-year -year growth is around 30%. Now, however, compare this to 2022, it's about 60% less, according to Maxim Salikov of the Information Centre. Now, the figures for 2022, 21-22 uh, are significantly higher than the current figures, and obviously that was before sanctions. But despite the lack of comprehensive data, Gazprom's calculations for the period between January the 1st and August the 15th, 2022, the exports to non-CIS countries reached 78.5 billion uh, cubic metres, and that's about 36% decrease compared to the same period in 2021. Furthermore, it should be noted that the deliveries are to non-CIS countries are, are not solely the EU. Now, several experts interviewed so identify several reasons for the increase in the Russian Federation's share of gas imports to the EU. 
Firstly, there's the price factor. According to Igor Yuskov, who's an analyst at the National Energy Security Fund, Russia offers gas at a price lower than any of its global competitors can offer. Plus, there's no possibility of increasing the, the rate of pipelines gas supplies. I mean, both the remaining gas pipeline supply routes, which are Ukraine uh, transport and the Turkey stream, are operating at their full actual capacity, and they were underutilised back in 2023. Secondly, the share is growing as a result of a reduction in the number of shares held by other suppliers. As Yuskop observed, suppliers have reorientated a large portion of their volumes from European markets to Asia where the prices are higher. So, Russia supplied more LNG and pipeline gas than the USA did. So, thirdly, there's a lack of clarity regarding the future transit through the Ukraine territory after the current agreement expires on the 31st of December this year. Now, the Ukrainians have stated that it doesn't intend to conclude a new agreement. Now, one potential solution for maintaining the transit is to put the capacities on the UK Ukrainian gas transport system on a short-term basis or use intermediaries like OMF in Austria who buy the gas from that and they pay for the transit. Now these significant uh, circumstances are advisable for European companies to utilise the underground storage facilities to their full capacity just in case there's no agreement between Russia and Ukraine and they can't reach an agreement with Ukraine. I mean, the intention to utilise the current facilities to their full extent is evidenced by the gas storage facilities are already 90% full, despite the target level being of the EU Commission being 90% and that's by November the 1st. Now, fourthly, the unavailability from, of gas from other sources. According to Oleg Sutra, a partner at SBS Consultant, Norway, the largest gas supplier in Europe, has limited supplies due to its maintenance going on at some of its gas fields. Now, compensation for supplies is possible in the short term for, through pipeline gas from Russia, but as we said, it's already uh, been up to its maximum. Also, in parallel, prices for LNG in Asia have increased and American gas has flooded to that market. It's only feasible to make up for the shortfall from the nearest and largest and plus the cheapest, Russia. So while there's political obstacles to doing business with Russia, the lack of alternative suppliers forces European companies to turn to Russia and uh, basically bite the bullet. I mean, the reduction in Russian gas supplies from 2022 has resulted in the European market being a premium, with high prices higher sometimes than they've been in Asia. However, despite a reduction in prices, weak demand is going to persist in Europe, deindustrialization. I mean, in 2023, gas demand fell by 7.4% after a decline of 11% in 2022. The Salikov notes that operational data that indicates there's going to be a continued decline in the gas demand, which will make the Asian market the premium one once again. Now, this winter, the situation in the EU will depend on a combination of factors related to the temperatures, the volumes of Ukraine transit, and the availability of LNG on the world markets. Meanwhile, it's indicated that prices on the European market are going to remain around 420 to 450 per thousand cubic meters, which is more than double what they used to pay Russia for its pipeline gas. So despite all the rhetoric, they're still hooked on the needle of Russian gas. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Now, don't forget the comments section. I do love to get comments. I do love responding to your comments now. I'll see you all again soon.